in this video we are going to talk about centripetal force okay so centripetal force is a force that makes an object to move around the circle okay so now if we have an object or maybe let's say we have the circle now the force that is directed inward toward the center that is what we call centripetal force okay so now we know that when there is force there is also acceleration an object can't move without acceleration so if the force directed toward the center is the centipetal force meaning the centipetal acceleration is also supposed to be directed in the same direction so we know that the centipetal acceleration is given by the formula v squared over r but at the same time we also know that the force is given by mass times acceleration so what of the centipetal force okay so centipetal force is going to be equal to the mass times centipetal acceleration but we also know that centipetal acceleration is v squared over r therefore we are going to replace where there is a with v squared over r then centipetal force is going to be given by m v squared over r so this is the formula for centipetal force okay at the same time this is the formula for centipetal acceleration okay now <clears throat> we need to understand to say when an object is moving around the circle we have what we call centripetal force okay that's what we have agreed but now centripetal force can be represented by many forces let's say that you have an object let's say you've got a bob and then this bob is supported by the rope so now <coughs> the for the force supported by the rope is what we call the tension force meaning this is going to be the tension force okay now let's say you are spinning this bulb in this direction along the circle okay you are spinning it now as we can see the tension force is directed the inward toward the center of the circle meaning that we can we can consider this tension force as what the centripetal force okay so in this case centripetal force is going to be to be represented by what the tension force therefore we can calculate the tension force as we know that the centripetal force is what mv squared over r okay now there are two scenarios when you are spinning this bulb at a very high speed this is what's going to happen when you are spinning this at a very high speed high speed now what is happening is that um, the tension force is going to be in a horizontal line which is going to be in this we can say it's going to be in a straight line okay so when the bulb is moving or is spinning at a very high speed then this is true the tension force is going to be equal to centripetal force this is when we can use um, the same formula to say mv squared over the radius but now there is another scenario where we are spinning the bulb at a very slow rate, uh, at a very uh, maybe let's say the the speed is not that much high okay let's say this is the bulb now instead of it going in a straight direction this is what's going to happen okay or maybe i can just get rid of this let's say that this is the bulb now it is spinning not at a very high speed meaning that it's going to to spin at an angle this is what's going to happen okay so it is spinning therefore what you are going to have here is that this is the tension force now this tension force is going to have the x component as well as the y component this is when the tension force is not what horizontal meaning that the bulb is spinning at a very slow rate we are going to have theta there so you can say that this is going to be tx at the same time this is going to be ty now how can we calculate the tension force now the way we can calculate the tension force here because this bulb is at a free <coughs> it, it is moving in uh, in a free fall so we can say that we're going to have also what the mg in this direction so this bulb is spinning it is moving in x direction therefore if if it is moving in x direction the forces in y direction they're supposed to give us zero when we add them so what forces do we have in y direction first of all let's talk about the ty and tx in terms of uh sokatoa so t uh, ty is going to be ty is equal to t sine sine theta at the same time tx is going to be t 
cos theta. Therefore, we can say that the forces in y direction, we are going to have dy which is directed upward, then it's going to carry a positive sign, dy minus, okay? Um, before we even go there, we know that uh, in y direction, we're going to have dy, the same dy, minus, <coughs> minus what? Minus mg has to be equal to zero. Therefore, we can say that dy is going to be equal to mg. Okay, so we are going to be given the mass as well. We know the g. Okay, 9.8. What of tx? So now, we know that uh, tx is directed inward toward the center. Okay, so we can say that tx is going to be equal to the centripetal force. So tx is going to be equal to the mv squared over r. So we can get this triangle. It's more like we have this. We have this part, which is ty, we have tx, then we are trying to find t. This is the theta. We can say that, then this is true, we can say that t is going to be, we are going to use Pythagoras theorem. So it's going to be tx squared plus ty squared. So we know that tx, we can calculate it using mv squared over r. ty, we can calculate it what? Using mg. That is what we need to understand. Okay? But now... We can also calculate uh, the, the, the dilation using the what? The tan. So we can say that tan theta is going to be equal to, is adjacent, is um, opposite over adjacent, which is going to be ty over tx. So we can say that theta is going to be tan inverse, then you have ty over tx. So this is the formula which we can use to calculate what? The dilation or the angle. Okay. Now, there are some other scenarios which you need to understand. Let's say that the car is moving um, around the circle. Okay? So let's say this is the, uh, the roundabout, and then this is the car. Okay? Now, this car is moving in this direction. So we're going to have what? Um, the velocity. We can say the angular velocity. We can say the angular velocity, which we're going to have. Okay? So now, if the car is moving... There is a friction between the tires and the, the load. Now, that friction is always directed toward the center. So, we can call that this is the friction. Now, since this friction is directed toward the center, then we can say that uh, friction force is going to be equal to what? The centripetal force. Okay? Now, we know that friction force is always mu times the normal force. Is equal to, we know that the centripetal force is uh, mv squared over r. But we also know that uh, this, the normal force is given by mg. So we can replace where there's uh, fn with mg. So we're going to say that mu times mg is equal to mv squared over r. We can cancel m because uh, we are talking about the same car. So we can cancel m. Therefore, we are going to remain with mu times g is equal to v squared over r. Now from here, we can calculate anything. If I want to calculate the coefficient of uh, friction, I'll just say, I'll just make mu as subject of formula, then I'm going to say it's going to be mu g is equal to v squared over r. And then I can say uh, we divide, or maybe let's say we do times uh, 1 over g. Even here we do times 1 over g. So that here g and g will go. Then we're going to have mu is equal to v squared over Rg. So this is the formula which we can also use to get what the coefficient of what friction. Okay. Now, another scenario is where maybe let's say um, an object is rotating in the drum. Okay. So let's say that this is the drum, and then we have got an object. Okay. Let's say that this is our drum. Now, in here, let's say that we have got an object. Or let's say there is someone inside there. Now, this is rotating. Okay, rotating. Now, allow me to get only this part. So now, I'm going to get as this is the object which is rotating in the drum. Okay? Now, if there is no friction, this, this object will just fall down due to gravity. So, the forces which we are going to have here, we are going to have the the mg which is the force of gravity the weight force 
at the same time we are going to have the what the friction force which is going to be directed upward so that it will oppose it oppose the what the motion of what uh, the fg okay or maybe the force of gravity so you can say that we have friction force now in this case since the object is rotating in this direction in x direction we are going to say that the normal force is going to be directed inward so we're going to have the normal force so when something is rotating in the drum we, we, we only have three forces the friction force pointed up the mg pointed down and the normal force pointed in the direction of what is centipetal force okay so now we need to understand that since the normal force is directed inward then we can say that the normal force is going to be equal to the centipetal force so now this object is rotating in x direction therefore the forces in y direction they are when we add them they are supposed to give us zero so what are the forces which we have in y direction we have got the uh, the friction force which is pointing up so we can say that the friction force minus the mg pointing down has to be equal to zero so the friction force is going to be equal to the mg okay it's going to be equal to the mg now we know that the friction force is given by mu time the normal force has to be equal to the mg now the the fn we have already said that it is directed inward meaning that we can replace fn with what the centipetal force therefore it's going to be mu time the centipetal force is equal to mg so what we are going to say now here is that we also know that the centipetal force is given by mv squared over r so we can depress where there is centipetal force with mv squared over r so it's going to be mu times mv squared over r has to be equal to mg okay so now since we're talking about the same object meaning it has got the same mass so therefore we can cancel the mass let's cancel the mass so what we're going to have now is that we're going to have let me get rid of this okay this is what we're going to have we are going to have uh, the mu v squared over r has to be equal to g so we can do times for, for us to uh, we want to make mu a subject of formula then we can say times r over v squared even here times r over v squared so the r and r will cancel the v squared and v squared will cancel will remain with mu is equal to uh, g r over v squared so when you want to find the coefficient of friction this is the formula which we are supposed to to know but now physics is trick we are supposed to drive these formulas just understand the concept the forces which are going to have with three forces the friction force pointing up the mg pointing down the normal force pointing in the same direction as what centipetal force this is what we need to understand okay so now let's take for instance we have got a funnel okay so if this is the funnel okay if this is the funnel okay let me let me draw it okay so if we have the funnel and then let's say that this funnel this is what we have now let's say that here we are going to be given let's say we have radius from this point all the way to this point and let's call it r and then let's say that we have uh, this part then it joins there then we have feet so let's say that we have got an object which is rotating okay it is it is it is spinning inside there the fan uh, the funnel so what is happening there is that uh, allow me to get on this portion okay now we have this i've just gotten this part so now that part which we have there we are going to have the feet here so we have an object which is in, in there now this object which you have we are going to have the mg which is going to be here at the same time we are going to have the normal force which is going to be directed in in there okay the normal force which is going to be indirected there now this normal force since it's not in a straight line we can say that this normal force is going to have the the uh, the x component as well as the y component then we can also say that according to what is happening here this feta which is being formed there is the same as the feta which is going to be formed there 
okay so we can say that this is the, our mx which is the, the normal force oh sorry that is the normal force then this is the normal force in x direction this is the normal force in y direction okay so we know that uh, this is the theta this is uh, ny is going to be the opposite so it's going to be if i want to find ny it's going to be ny is equal to n sine theta using sokato then nx is going to be n nx is going to be n cos theta okay now since this object is spinning meaning it is moving in x direction therefore the forces in y direction allow me to get rid of this the forces in y direction so the forces in y direction they are going to give us zero okay so now we can start the forces in y direction okay so we can say that the forces in y direction we add them they are supposed to give us zero what forces do we have in y direction we have ny which is ny minus mg is pointing down has to be equal to zero now where this ny we are going to put n sin theta so it's going to be n sin theta minus mg is equal to zero so i can shift mg to the other side so it's going to be n sin theta is equal to mg okay is equal to mg okay let's call this equation as equation one let's go to the forces in x direction since the object is moving x direction therefore we can say that um the forces in x direction we are going to have acceleration which is centipetal acceleration we are going to have this the acceleration in x direction so what forces do we have we have got in nx this has to be equal to the centipetal what acceleration but we know that nx is given by what n cos feet so we're going to say n cos theta is going to be equal to centipetal acceleration we know that is v squared over r okay let's call this as equation two now what i want us to understand guys is that the first equation let's make n a subject of formula okay so the first equation which we have is uh, i can also get rid of this okay so the first equation which we have uh, we have n sin theta is equal to mg so let's make n a subject of formula we are trying to find velocity okay how fast the object will be spinning inside the uh, inside the funnel so let's divide both sides by what sin theta we are trying to eliminate n sin phi sin theta so therefore we're going to have our n is equal to mg over cos theta now in equation 2 we are going to replace where there is n with mg over cos theta okay therefore this is what we are going to have so where there is n here i'm going to put mg so i'm going to put where there is i'm going to put mg over cos theta now times we have sin theta is equal to mv squared over r now what i'm going to have now is that this is going to be like this we are going to have mg times sin theta divided by cos theta is equal to mv squared over r now sin over cos is cot okay sin theta divided by cos theta is what cot theta then cos theta uh okay okay i think we have made a mistake somewhere it was supposed to be cos theta over sin theta yes here it is um we have made a mistake here because we are saying that eh, we have divided both sides by what eh? we have divided both sides by um sine meaning that our n is going to be equal to mg over sin theta okay so now where there is n in in second equation we are going to put mg sin theta okay therefore this is what we are going to have we are going to have mg i'm replacing mg over sin theta where there is n in second equation over sin theta times cos theta is going to be equal to mv squared over r so now we know that cos over sin is going to give us cot cot theta okay so now we are going to have mg cot theta is equal to mv squared over the radius this is v okay so we can see that m appears both side we can cancel m 
therefore we are going to have let me get rid of this now okay so this is what we are going to have we are going to have g cot theta is equal to v squared over the radius okay now if we have that one we are trying to find v okay we are trying to find velocity how can we make v a subject of formula let's do, let's let's do cross multiply so we are going to have cross multiplication we are going to have v squared is equal to rg cot theta but we also we need to understand again that uh, cot theta is the same as 1 over tan theta therefore i can replace where this cot theta with 1 over tan theta so we are going to have v squared is equal to rg times what 1 over than theta. The reason why I'm doing this is because we don't have code uh, on calculator. So it's not possible for you to punch code. Okay? That's the reason I've replaced uh, code with 1 over tan theta. Okay? So this one is going to be now v squared is equal to rg because rg times 1 is going to be rg divided by tan theta. Then now we get the square root both sides. We are going to get our v is equal to rg over tan theta now it is squared so now this is the velocity which we are supposed to this is the formula which is going to give us how fast an object is moving um in the funnel okay